QuickBooks Desktop 2023, enter payroll for second month. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the home page, view drop down, hide icon bar, open windows, list checked off, open windows, open reports drop down, company and financial, P and L, change the range, 0101232, 123, customize fonts and the numbers changing them to 14 okay yes okay one more time with the reports drop down company and financial balance sheet standard let's customize it with the changing ranging 010123 to 123123 fonts and the numbers to bring it on up to 14 okay yes okay so there it is. There's the setup process we do every time. Now we're going to be running payroll for the second time for the second month. So we're going to go back to the home page and recall that the payroll items uh, down below, the last kind of cycle down below, you need to have payroll turned on in order to process payroll. So just a quick recap, because we did run the payroll in the prior month. The quick recap being, you want to make sure when you're processing payroll, set the process up right the first time. When you look at the adage of, should I tinker with something or should I measure uh, twice and cut once? With payroll, you're typically better off measuring twice, cutting once, because if there's a problem, it often is found at the end of the year when you're doing W2s, W3, and you got a whole lot of other stuff going on. You don't want to go back and fix any problems. Also, changing payroll in the middle of the year is kind of an issue. It's not something you typically want to be doing. Also, do you want to set up the payroll within QuickBooks or do you want to have a third party provider help you out with payroll? If you're a bookkeeper, for example, you want to be thinking, do I want to be doing the payroll in-house or do I want to be setting up clients where I'm working with a group of people, which may include payroll providers that can that I can have a system with to put to help with my bookkeeping process generally and possibly like a CPA firm and tax preparer of course as well we are running the manual payroll in the system which can be found by going to the edit drop down the preferences and then down below in the payroll items and company preferences we turned on the manual payroll which is great for a practice problem but not something you typically want to do in practice running live because you typically want the double checks that are going to be necessary, you know, or helpful to, to negate any kind of math errors when you're doing the payroll calculations. They also could help you filling out the payroll forms, the quarterly 941s, the 940, the W2s and the W3s more easily as well. But the manual payroll, great tool for practice. It's on, we can tell because we have the little arrow down here below showing the process of the payroll. Note the arrow thing starts at the enter time. Entering time may not be required to process the payroll. If we have hourly employees, we might, we're going to need the time in some way, shape or form, which might be done with the enter time. But we might also just have them do it with a, with some other check-in or check-out system or with just like a, like an Excel worksheet, just telling me what, how much time you have worked for the week. We have seen the enter time be useful, not simply to process the payroll, but to create invoices. If you're in a job cost system common in professions like a law firm, CPA firm, where people are billing out their time. And then we're going to be invoicing the partners, for example, invoicing to, to the clients uh, at the end of the month or something like that. 
We also saw that when you set up the payroll, we have to set up the items. If I go to the lists dropdown, we have the, the item list or the payroll item list. These items are typically going to be set up as we create the payroll. You can see that they are driving the calculation of payroll in a similar fashion as like inventory items and so on and service items drive the sales process when using the form of invoices and sales receipts. These are going to be driving the process when entering the forms of the pay employees. Pay employees will in essence generate checks for each employee similar to a normal check form decrease in the checking account but also account for all the other stuff that goes on the withholdings and whatnots and the liabilities. Let's go into the pay employees item here and go through the process. We're going to say the pay period is going to be at the end of uh, February and that would be monthly paying. So you might pay people, typically people pay weekly, semi-weekly, bi-monthly, uh, monthly would be the general idea. We're going to say the check is on the same date, 02-28-23. That doesn't always have to be the case because you might say, hey, I need some time after the end of the period in order to count my hours or allow people to give me the hours so I can process payroll. But in this case, we're going to say they're the same day. It's going to come out of the checking account. Remember that you could consider having a separate checking account for payroll exclusively. Why? Because that will allow you to have all your payroll transactions in one location. And because they can be complex, it can be useful to have just one account with just payroll transactions in it. Although it takes more problem or more detail to do that because you'll have to transfer money into the payroll account simply so it can cover payroll so that you can then pay that same money out of the payroll account. But it gives you that nice detail just in payroll. We can print the checks, print paychecks on uh, check stock, or we can say handwrite and assign the check numbers. If they're electronic transfers, then we just wouldn't have the check number here, but we're still going to use a check type form because that's the form that decreases the checking account. So then I'm going to check these two off down below and then I'm going to go into their detail because we don't have the paid payroll. We have to enter the added detail, but it's useful to go in here and see all the all the activity uh, within the system. Now notice I turned on for Adam. I turned on the uh, the tracking of the time which is pulling in here now. So I kind of messed things up when I turned on the time. So let me fix this. So we basically paid, we paid Adam a salary. So we said the salary, I think it was 65,000. Is that what we paid, divided by 12? No, we paid him 55,000 divided by 12. So we're paying him 4583. So there it is, 4583 that we're going to be paying out. So that looks good actually, even though they put it in the two line items because it pulled over some stuff from the time entry, I believe. So now we're going to go down here and say, okay, let's calculate the federal withholdings. This would be coming from the W-2 information. This is his withholdings for their federal income tax. This is the most confusing one to calculate, almost impossible to do so without just tables uh, because it's because it's not a flat tax, right? So this is, I'm just going to put a random 720 here for our example problem purposes. The social security is more of a flat tax. So usually it would be 4583.34 times 0.062. So something like that typically. So that looks about right. So we're going to say this is going to be 248.17. And then Medicare is usually going to be the 4583.34. That's the total earnings times the 0.0145. So 6646 looks like we got it right this time, 6646. So those are just the federal taxes might have other things that we're taking out that are voluntary from his check, which could include retirement plans, 401k, health insurance, vision, that kind of stuff as well. Our taxes that we have to pay on top are going to be down here matching the Social Security at the 248.17, matching the Medicare at the 66.46. So there are our taxes. We also have federal unemployment. I'm not going to get into that now because there's caps on it that kind of confuse things. It's a smaller tax. That's the general idea for the payroll. If you can understand, you know, the payroll entry, then you will have a, a, a big leg up on other people, whether the payroll is processed within QuickBooks or outside of it, because the payroll transaction is often, you know, somewhat complex of a transaction. 
So what's this going to do? We're going to say it's going to increase the expense of the 4583 the gross, what he earned. And then it's going to decrease the cash by the 3548 because we're taking this stuff from him, in this case, the required federal taxes. That means the difference has to go somewhere. It's going to go into a liability account, which you could just call payroll liability, that we're going to have to pay out, in this case, to the federal government for this these three items. And there's payroll taxes. These are the payroll taxes. These are kind of payroll taxes, too. And sometimes it depends how you use the term. But these are payroll taxes paid by the employee, which we as the employer are forced to take from the employee before they get it so that we can pay it to the government on their behalf. These are payroll taxes that we are having to pay over and above what we agreed to pay the employee. They're not coming out of the employee's checks. We're paying them over and above based on the earnings of the employee. So that's going to increase the liability for payroll taxes and it's going to have a payroll tax expense for these two amounts. Save it and close it. Or let's say save and next. So now we've got the earnings for Erica. So Erica, we're going to say worked. We, Erica, we're going to say worked. I'm actually going to change her rate to, to 15. We're going to say 15 on the rate. And then 160. I should go and change that in Erica's information. But I'm going to keep it here just so we can process payroll. So that gives us the 2400 we're going to say the, the federal withholding, which we would get from the, the uh, W-4 information. This is what would be great for to pay for within QuickBooks to allow QuickBooks to calculate it because it's a confusing thing. you got to go to the tables and that kind of stuff. Social Security is usually more straightforward. So 2,400 times 0 0.062 would be 148. So that would be 148 because it's more of a flat tax. And then Medicare is usually going to be 2400 times 0.0145 at this time, at least. 3480, so 3480. So that makes sense. And then we've got to match it down here on our side at the three, at the, not the three, the 148.8 and the 34.8. So what's this going to do? Same thing. We're going to say, well, they got gross pay increase in the expense. 2400 the other side checking account going down by the check that we're going to pay Erica 1856.40 the difference of the withholdings is going to go to a liability account or multiple liability accounts depending on how we set them up using the payroll items and then we also have our taxes that we have to pay over and above the the taxes that we took from the employee out of their wages in theory and that will increase the liability account and have payroll tax expense. Notice that we can think about that, that process of which accounts will be impacted employee by employee, which, if we're processing the payroll internally, will be necessary because we're going to have to use the paycheck stubs and give those to the employees. However, if, for example, we had a third party doing the payroll, or just to think conceptually, you can think about all of our employees as if one employee and think about that same kind of journal entry and see the impact on the financial statements. In other words, the expenses for all employees will go up by the gross earnings of all employees. The net check is what's going to decrease the checking account for all employees. The payroll expenses that were taken from the employees, the withholdings, will increase the liability for all employees and then our payroll taxes will will be increasing the tax expense and the liability for our payroll taxes okay so we got the check this looks good and so em employees da, 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 da. let's go ahead and see if we can continue and say we're going to create the paychecks i think we're good to go let's do it create the paychecks you have successfully created two paychecks great so now we want to say let's take a look at the the pay stubs and let's just uh, see if we can preview them, preview them. So, okay. And so here's the pay steps. Now, remember that you can't just, you can't just process the payroll, even if it's electronic and give that to the, to the employee, because typically they're going to need the payroll stub detail, which gets quite detailed, right? So now we've got to give them the sal how much they earned on the current basis for the current pay period, how much we took from them for withholdings on behalf of the government, how much we paid them, and we need that information on a year-to-date basis. 
So the stuff gets kind of uh, complex in terms of the amount of data that we have to report. That's why you kind of have to pay for payroll, even though one any no one calculation is all that complex. When you put them all together, it gets complex. So we're going to close this out. I'm going to close this out and say, OK, let's close this. I usually like to check my register reports drop down and go to my my use. I'm sorry, banking. Let's go to use register and go to the checking account. So here's the paychecks that were created. You can see that they say paycheck. If I double click on the paycheck, it has that information down below. If I want to see more detail, I can go to the paycheck detail. And there's the detail. Now, if you need to fix one of these paychecks, you typically don't want to go in here and try to fix the paycheck. Once it's been processed, you would typically want to void the paycheck or possibly delete it, but be careful doing that and then process it again. You, you, you kind of have to process the payroll again oftentimes. So you, that's again why you want to try to get it correct the first time whenever you're processing payroll because fixing it can be more of a problem than spending more time on the front end. Okay, so then we're going to say what happened? Well, if I go into the checking account, double click in the checking account, we see our two paychecks down below. And that, of course, has been recorded. Let's just pick Adam here for the net check, the net check. So if I look at the detail, the net check, closing that out, closing that out the, on the expense side, closing this out, which is on the profit and loss, we have the payroll expenses and we broke out the taxes separately, which is common. That's driven by the payroll items. If I go into Adam's check here, so that is for the full amount. This is the second check. We want to look at the second check, Adam's second check. It got, uh, they put it in here, be, uh, uh, name of the customer because of the fact that we turned on the time. So I'm gonna say, okay, here it is. If I go into the check, that's for the net, which is the three, five, uh, I'm sorry, this is for the full amount, the four, five, eight, three, 34, closing this back out, closing this back out, and that should be this plus this. So that's gonna be, the 2291.67 plus 2291.67 should be the 4583.34. And then I'm going to close this back out. The difference is going to the balance sheet up top in the liability account now for what we collected or took from the employees that now needs to be paid to the government. So we've got these items here representing three entries. Well, and then the and then also our our employer side. So we've got the federal income tax, Social Security, and Medicare all going to the federal government, and then we've got our side. But we'll talk about that in a second. And then we've got on our side. If I go back to the profit and loss, we broke that out separately for the payroll taxes, which should not include withholdings, but just our side of the taxes. Let's look at Erica this time, since it's less confusing because I didn't turn on the tracking thing. And if we go into that then that's going to include our taxes, which is this side, 148.8 plus 34.8. That's the 183.60 that we had to pay over and above what we, what we said we were going to pay her for her payroll taxes that are our side of things. And that then is also going to go into the balance sheet and increase the liability account. And that's why you've got these duplicate items here and here. There's the employer portion and the employee portion that are increasing the liability closing that back out you can also run payroll reports i won't go into a lot of detail here but in the employee payroll there's nice reports in this excel report uh, you might want to check that out i'll just take a look at the payroll summary from 0101 uh, to three let's say to uh let's say to 022823 just for the two months so here's the detail, let's customize it. Let's see if I can bring it up just a tad to like 11. Okay, 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 so that's that's perfect. Okay, so now we've got our data now with uh, the, basically looks formatted like a paycheck stub. So you got Adam, you got Erica, you can also think about it in total. The total is what you think the net impact should be basically on our financial statements. So, so for here, for example, we've got the, the net pay. Those are, that's what came out of the checking account for the, the two checks. We've got then the gross adjusted gross pay. Let's go to the income statement. Let's actually adjust the income statement for the two months by going 022823. And then I'll go to the totals and make this a month by month. 
So now if I go down to the month by month, I've got the, the payroll expense and we're at the 13,966,67. Payroll th summary, 13,966,67, that makes sense. Then this is the amount that was uh, withheld. And then we've got the employer payroll taxes, 972.46. If I go to the to the profit and loss, we've got the 972.46. So that makes sense, right? And then in terms of our liabilities at this point in time, we've got the these that were withheld that we still have to pay to the government because we on the employee's behalf, 3132.46 plus our portion that we have to pay down here, which is plus the 972.46. So you would think our liability at this point in time would be that. So that's our liability, right? 410492. And then we could run this report if I ran this profit, this payroll summary, you know, just for February 020123. You could start to kind of experiment with this and you could say okay here's the gross pay for the month of february that should be on the profit and loss if i go to the profit and loss because now i have two months and i look at just payroll for february i'm at 698334 so there's the 698334 and the our portion is the 49823 that of payroll taxes, 49823 for the payroll taxes. So ticking and tying these things out is quite useful because at the end of the month and the end of the year, you'd like to be able to tie out your reports to your profit and loss and your balance sheet and tie that out to the forms that you're gonna have to give to the government to verify your payroll taxes, that being the quarterly 941 reports, the yearly 940 reports, the yearly W3 reports, the yearly W2 reports, as well as any other state reports that you need to be doing. All right, so let's go ahead and, and process our uh, our trial balance and see where we stand. 010123 to 123123, customizing fonts and numbers, changing it up to 16 and OK. Yes and OK, so you could check your numbers if everything ties out, great. If there's a problem, try changing the date range and see if it's a date range issue. We will be taking a look at the transaction detail reports shortly at the end of entering all the data for the second month, which hopefully helps hone down on any inconsistencies or problems at that time. Mm -hmm.